but I'm oh. talking about his acreage. Now listen, let him go. Well, we'll have a drink anyway. Well, that's that. We good sure idea. needed something like this, Will, to liven up the old burg. We certainly do, Abner. I wonder what's keeping Steve. There he is now. Oh, Steve, welcome home. We're glad to see you, boy. We're proud of you. How are you, Steve? Fine. You know, we're expecting big things of you here. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Uh, why don't you tell us about it, Steve? Was it really the way the paper said? You saved your patrol from ambush and got captured doing it? Something like that. Oh, come on, boy. You don't have to be <laughs> modest with me. I was in the first war. <laughs> well, I remember when I went out into Bella Woods. I was alone, and I had my uh, gun. You're still alone, Abner. I guess he doesn't think our war amounted to very much. May I have your attention, please? I'd like to make an announcement. Trying to sell some stock to pay for that new factory, Will? <laughs> First, I'd like to say officially what is in all our hearts. Welcome home, Steve. And second, I'd like to give this welcome some practical meaning. As you know, I started in Kenwall City with one small factory. Now there are five of them across the state and more to come. I want Steve to go to work for me. Oh, it isn't just a job. I'm offering Steve a full partnership, half of all I have. Uncle Will, I don't quite know what to say. Oh, you don't have to say anything about it. Just sign. It's all happening so fast. I just got back. Give me a little time to think about it. You don't have to think about it. I'm offering you a full partnership. It'll be all yours someday. I'm not sure it's what I want. Well, I don't know of anything else you can make more money at. I know that, Uncle Will. It's... Oh, and don't think I'm ungrateful. But I'm not sure that's what I want to do with my life yet. Could we talk about it tomorrow, maybe? Just as you say, Steve. Thanks. Excuse me, Mama. I think I want to go back upstairs. Looks like Steve's forgotten the value of money. Maybe the commies gave him a brainwash and it took. Sorry, Mom, if I disappointed you. Everything will be all right. I understand, dear. I... I just wanted to tell you that Professor Kimberly called. Kimberly? When? Early in the evening. He said he didn't have any classes tomorrow, so he'd be home all day if you wanted to stop by. I'll do that. How is the old boy? Do you ever see him? Mm, once in a while. He's still at the college. Still lives in the same flat he took 30 years ago. I'll go over and see him in the morning. Oh, and uh, Uncle Will wants you to stop by the office late in the afternoon. Sure, I'll feel more like talking to him. Good night, dear. Good night, Mom. Oh, Steve, I might as well get it over with. I have to know. It isn't true what Pete said about brainwashing. Now, Mom. We just read in the papers about the boys who've come back from Korea and how they may have changed. You've changed, too. You're right, Mom. I have changed. Steve. And the communists did have something to do with it but not the way you think. For two years in prison camp, I had it all. The party line blaring at me through loudspeakers, staring at me from every printed page. I got a lungful every time I breathed, a mouthful every time I ate. Times you got so exhausted you wanted to give in. Like wanting to go to sleep in the snow. It didn't. It didn't get you, though. Only because I spent two years thinking twice as hard in the opposite direction, stacking up our way of life against the communists. And I became convinced the only strength of the communist lies in our weakness. That doesn't explain why you hesitate to accept Will's offer. But it does, Mom. You see, they get into the thick of things while most of us sit on the sidelines, waiting for the world to fall in on top of us. Somebody has got to do something about it. Somebody has got to push our product just as hard. But you, dear, what can you do? That's what I don't know yet. That's what I intend to find out. Hey, where'd you get that hand grenade? It's a dummy. It ain't loaded. Are you sure? Sure. I know all about grenades. Pull the pin and boom! Maybe you better give it to me anyway, huh? No. Where'd you get it? One of the 
kids got it from his dad. I swapped him a ball glove for it, but it ain't loaded. I see. Uh, this where you live? I know somebody who lives here. His name is Kimberly. He's a teacher. Something wrong with that? Are you kidding? You don't like teachers, do you? I hate them, and I hate school. That's where you ought to be right now, in school. I wish they'd blow them all up, like this. Boom! That's an awfully big grudge for such a small boy. I ain't small. I didn't mean it that way. Because you and all the other kids are about the biggest thing we have. Never mind. I'll see you again, maybe, huh? Professor, your wife told me to come right in. Oh, Steve, back from the wars, eh? I'm not quite sure. Sit down, Steve. Let's have one of our old time talks. I certainly could use one. I'm all mixed up, Professor. Mm, what's this? Oh, I got that scratch about a week ago in Korea on a piece of barbed wire. Just one week ago. And suddenly here I am right back where I left off. But I'm not really back. Why do you say that? Because I'm still thinking the way I did then. Worrying about where we're headed, our country, our world, our civilization. Wherever you are, Steve, it's fine to be concerned, but not to worry. Not worry? With the world at its own throat, struggling to destroy itself with atomic bombs? Worry never stopped disaster. Remember the little boy in Holland? He didn't worry about the flood. He put his finger in the hole. He did something. So can you, Steve. You can help change the world for the better. Easy now, Professor. Don't you give me that hero routine. I did what I had to do, and I got wounded and captured. That's all. There's reason enough in that to call you a hero. But there's a greater reason. The way you're talking, the way you feel, that's what makes you a real hero. Let's assume I buy that. Where does it lead? Just a minute. I have something here that I think might interest. Here, take this. Read it. All God's children. What's it about? It's the uh, new Christopher book that shows how everybody can do something to strengthen our schools. All God's children. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's where we have to start, with the kids. Oh? Why do you think that? I remember the ones I saw in Korea. Too tired, confused, to even wonder what was happening around them. Accepting death and starvation with a blank Stunned look. And just now, the kid on your doorstep, Professor, he was playing with a hand grenade. You mean Jimmy? Perhaps it's his answer to the world he lives in. Sure. Pull the pin and boom, some answer. Maybe it's all he has. Well, that's the point. He needs help, but he won't let anyone help him, not even his teachers. He seems to hate them on general principles, including you. I know. I passed him in the hall on the steps, and he's afraid. I've seen it before, that same look. I'd forgotten it could happen here. Let me show you something. Stop it with your finger. It could happen there, anywhere. But it's not their fault. Somehow it's our fault. You'd like to do something about it? What can I do, Professor? I'm just one guy. But you are one. You can't do everything, but you can do something. And what you can do, you ought to do. Okay, I'll bite. How exactly? Did you ever think of becoming a teacher, Steve? Me? I know it's a big idea at first. That's the wonderful thing about it. It never ceases to be a big idea. Okay, so we need good teachers. But why should it be me? Why shouldn't it be you? If you won't, who will? If everyone wanted somebody else to help carry their share of the load, you know where the 36 million young people in our schools would be, don't you? Either the classrooms would be empty, or the doors would be wide open to the type of teacher that could wreck America. I came here looking for an easy way out, Professor. I should have known better. For people who really care, Steve, there is no easy way, today or ever. Well, so long, Professor. Good luck, Steve. Haven't you gone to school yet? I ain't going, and you can't 
make me. Do your parents know you do this? I only got a mom. She works most of the time. You're not going to learn anything sitting here on the steps, are you? I know all I got to learn. I see. Would you show me what you're drawing? You'll make me tear it up. Well, why would I do that? That's what Miss Dale makes me do. Then I got to stay after school. Do you like to draw? Sometimes. But I can play ball and fight, too. Then I'll settle for seeing the picture. What for? Looks like an animal I saw once. Yeah? You never saw no animal like this. Not exactly. The one I saw had 16 legs and an eye in the back of his head so he could see where he had been. Where'd you find him? Any place I wanted. Yeah? That's the way it is with my animals. Is that why you hate your teacher? Because she makes you tear up your drawings? It's more than that. The way she looks at me, like I'm a dummy. Then my voice feels funny and I can't talk. And the other kids laugh and... Are you a dummy, Jimmy? Uh... I guess so. What else does your teacher say and do to you? She says someday I'll get locked up and spend the rest of my life drawing animals on a jail wall. I don't want to be locked up. You won't be, Jimmy. You won't be. Well, boy, playing hooky, you're not getting away this time. Who are you? Truant officer, just doing my job, mister. I guess it's my fault, officer. Jimmy and I had a lot to talk about. I was just about to take him to school. My orders are to pick him up. Look, and... I'm Steve Turner. I'll take the responsibility. Steve Turner? Well, say now, that's a different story. Read all about you in the papers. Stan, you're sitting with a regular hero. Yeah? Is that who you are? The guy that was captured? That's who I am. Now, how about it? Let's go to school, huh? Sure, sure, Steve. Boy, wait till the other kids hear about this. Bet they won't laugh at me anymore. I'm going to see about that, too, Jimmy. Thanks, officer. Nice meeting you, Mr. Turner. Let's go, Jimmy. Mr. Turner, Jimmy's back in his classroom, and uh, I've seen to it that he won't be punished this time. You said that you wanted to talk. Won't you sit down? What kind of a school are you running here, Mr. Wilson? What sort of teachers do you have in this place? What's this country coming to when kids like Jimmy are scared to go to school? Is this the best that we can do for them? That's a string of man-sized questions. But the offer to sit still goes. Thanks, I'll stand. Suit yourself. First of all, Mr. Turner, let's understand each other. I know that you're a war hero here in Kenwell City, and we're very proud of you. I also know that your uncle is one of the most influential men in town. What's that got to do with it? Just this. On both those counts, it would seem you have a perfect right to come into the school principal's office and bombard him with question. Well, I think it's about time we... Now, just a second, please. As far as I'm concerned, on a third count, you have a far greater right. Every American has the right, indeed the duty, to keep asking what's wrong with our schools and what's wrong with our country. And if the answer's not to his liking, he has the further right and duty to roll up his sleeves and do something about it. Well, I... Now, Mr. Turner, that we understand each other, let's get on with your questions. I think I'll take that chair after all. And call me Steve. Thank you, Steve. Now, uh, it would seem that Jimmy's been telling tales out of school. Well, it's not so much what he told me as what I read between the lines. It seems he has more than the ordinary schoolboy's aversion to his teacher. I gather she's mean and vindictive and probably quite incompetent. Well, uh, Miss Dale is emotionally unstable, enough so that her actions might be interpreted as mean and vindictive. You agree with me, then? In a measure, I do. I feel like the man that showed up with boxing gloves and nobody wanted to fight. I can't fight facts, Steve. As you say, Miss Dale is incompetent, and I'm afraid there are a few more in the school like her. Most of our teachers are doing a top-notch job against great odds, but unfortunately, there aren't enough of them. So we have no choice but to use Miss Dale, and sometimes worse. But we can't. The price is too high, especially when we have to pay for it at the expense of the kids. We can't, but we must. But why? Why? 
You speak of the American duty. Do you realize teachers like that are the greatest threat to our country's future? Go ahead, Steve. Get it out of your system. I intend to. For two years, I listened to the communist hogwash about our decaying democracy. According to them, our institutions, our government, our way of life, our schools were all rotten at the core. Got so we began to wonder if there wasn't some truth to what they were saying. And was there? No. No. But what I've seen and heard today is certainly fodder for their propaganda mills. It's not rotten, as they say, but there is something wrong. All right, Steve. Now, give me a turn at that. Uh, Miss Dale has been teaching here for three years, but only on a temporary basis. She has what we call an emergency license. Long emergency, isn't it? Yes, and it's apt to last much longer. You see, there just aren't enough qualified people training to be teachers. As a result, there aren't enough trained people to go around. So what are we supposed to do about it, Steve? Close the schools? No. We take anybody we can get. Like the Miss Dales? Yes. And some of them are much worse than Miss Dale. At least she isn't trying to do the students any harm. She's just not cut out to be a teacher. But it was either Miss Dale or a classroom with no teacher at all. Like the old army joke. If the body's warm, you're in. That's just about it, Steve. And, you know, this isn't a local problem. I was reading the figures just before you came in. Yes, here they are. Uh, there are over 125,000 teachers in these United States serving on temporary or substandard licenses. That's about one out of every nine. One out of every nine teachers, uh, a Miss Dale? I didn't say that. A temporary teacher isn't necessarily a bad one. Some of them are as fine as any formally qualified teacher in the land. But some of them just aren't capable, and those are the Miss Dales. And far worse are the regular teachers with warped ideas. There are only a few, but the harm they can do is immeasurable. You see, Steve, it really comes down to this. If the best Americans won't volunteer to teach the younger generation, then we have no choice but to use the next best. And too often, the next best can be the worst possible. You don't sound very optimistic. Oh, I am, Steve. I really am. I know that for 150 years, we've had one of the best school systems in the world. At the present time, it's underhoused, understaffed, and underfinanced. But this won't last forever. Soon, most Americans will know our problem, and they'll rise to meet it. And more and more, young people like yourself will see that teaching is our most vital profession, and they'll enter it. And surely everyone, Steve, young and old, must realize that in the classroom lies the very hope for our free world and indeed the promise of our future. Those boxing gloves I mentioned, I think I'll hang on to them for a while because I want to do something about all this. If enough young people would say just that, our problem would be solved overnight. Well, thanks, Mr. Wilson. Oh, and do you mind if I look in on Jimmy's class? I'll just stand in the door. Of course not. He's in room eight. Uh, Steve, I want to thank you for coming. You know, you almost caught me with my optimism down, but now it's up again. You know, I think mine is too. You asked to dry your hands with the class, Miss Powers, so let's see what you can do with it. A bit of experience won't do you any harm. Well, all right, Miss Dale. Children, children, please. Please. Now, children, if you're very quiet, I'll tell you a story. There's just enough time before the bell rings. We were talking about the Declaration of Independence. Now let's find out what it really means behind all those big words. Ow! Jimmy, Jimmy, come up here. I ain't done nothing except get hit by a spitball. Ain't? I ain't gonna say it anymore. Tom, you come up too. Here, Miss Powers. Tom, I saw you do it. It slipped, Miss Powers. I wouldn't shoot nothing at a dumb little shrimp like him. I ain't dumb. I ain't. I'll show you. I'll handle this, Miss Powers. I know what to do with these little roughnecks. Let me try, Miss Dale, please. Very well. Jimmy, you don't want to hit Tom. He hit me first. But he's your brother. Him? You're crazy. He's not my brother. Yeah, lucky for me. Do you both think you're good Americans? Sure I do. Me too. 
then you must believe what the men who founded our country said, don't you? Then remember what they said right in the Declaration of Independence. All men are endowed by their Creator. That means we all came from the same Creator, God, that He's the Father of us all. And if He's the Father, doesn't that mean that we're all children of God? And if we're all God's children, then we must all be brothers and sisters, including you and Tom. Gee, I never heard that before. Me either. Put it there, pal. Miss Powers, you had no right to say that. That's not part of the course. I'm sorry, Miss Dale, but our professor at Teachers College has told us that we fail to teach the Declaration of Independence unless we teach the whole story, the meaning behind it, which is what I was trying to do. Oh, nonsense. As for these two, now they'll think they can get away with anything. But, Miss Dale, isn't it better to... It would have been better if I had not let an inexperienced teacher like you take over my class. Come here, Jimmy. I've had just about all the nonsense from you I'm going to take. Do you hear? I said, do you hear me? I didn't do nothing. Oh, so I'm a liar now, am I? Let me go. Let me go. Oh, oh, oh. Are you hurt? Oh, you thug, you little thug. I'll have the police after you for this. No, no. I think she's all right now. Can you take care of her? Yes, I'm sure I can. Are you one of the teachers? No, but maybe I should be. Excuse me, I've got to take care of that boy. Hey, what's the bigger? Hey, what are you doing with that? This is Benson. Yeah, a kid with a hand grenade just run down an alley off Palmer Street. Yeah, I'm going after him, but I'm going to need some help. Yeah. Look, this is dangerous, folks. That kid's got a live grenade. Now move back. Yeah, a live grenade. Now step back. Come on. Step back. Come on, kid. Hand me that grenade. You don't want to do nothing like that. I got the pin out. Get back or I'll drop it. Hey, where do you think you're going? That kid, he needs help. Are you crazy? He's got a live grenade in his hand. He's already pulled the pin. He'll blow us all sky high if anybody goes near him. The thing isn't even loaded. Yes, it is. We found out where he got it. He stole it from a soldier who was asleep on the back of a truck. The truck was on its way to maneuvers. Sure, I thought you would steal it. Look, officer, I'm Steve Turner. I know that kid. Let me go to him, please. Steve Turner. I guess you ought to know enough about grenades. Come on, Steve. Easy, lad. We're not going to hurt you. Okay, fellas. This is Steve Turner. Go ahead, Steve. See what you can do. Hi, Jimmy. I saw what happened today in the classroom. It, it was an accident. I know that. The cops aren't here because of what happened to Miss Dale. They're here because of that live grenade in your hand. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly how to hand it to me. Stay away from me. Go ahead, blow me up if you want to. But there's something I want you to know. You did me a big favor today, Jimmy. You opened my eyes. You made me realize that the most important thing in my life is to help young fellas like you. You know how I'm going to do it, Jimmy? How? I'm going to become a teacher. Oh, you don't have to do nothing for me. I'm only doing it partly for you. I'm doing it for all the kids, for myself. Maybe you won't understand what I'm trying to tell you now, Jimmy, but unless those of us grown-ups who should be in teaching go into teaching, living just won't be worthwhile for any of us. Put that grenade in my hand without letting go the lever, and that way give me my chance to become a teacher. Please, Jimmy. Jimmy. Everything's going to be all right now, Jimmy. Everything is all right. All right, let's keep moving. Let's go. All right, folks, break it up. It's all over now. 
Just a second. It's not all over. In fact, it's just begun. Do you know why Jimmy is here today with a live hand grenade in his hand? The easiest thing is to say that the cops chased him. But that's not so. We drove him here. How? By not seeing to it that he got the very best that this nation could afford in teaching. As a result, Jimmy is frightened, insecure, uncertain about what lies ahead of him. What's his answer? What's his defense? In Jimmy's case, it was a live hand grenade. In others, who knows? There are millions of young Americans in our schools today. These kids have a right to the very best we can give them. But remember, education can be good, bad, or indifferent. It all depends on who does the teaching. Sure, we want the best in equipment, the best in buildings, the best in playgrounds, but brick and mortar don't make a school. The teacher makes a school. The ideas that are in his or her head can affect the whole future of our country, for better or for worse. Every one of you can play a part in seeing that it is for the better. The schools belong to you. They need you. Make it your business to look into them. Give the teachers the respect and the support they deserve. Encourage the very best of our young people to follow in their footsteps. This is one way to, to keep our freedom, to hold our heads high and say, this is God's country. We're all God's children. <laughs>